let's talk about different types of the maps. So uh, as we said earlier, so a map simply is a representation of the world, so of the culture of the uh, and also of the physical world. Uh, so based on our textbook, so they classified the map as three types. So it can be a reference map. So that basically tell you the locations of the features. Um, so for example, this one example that is a USGS topographic map. Uh, so you can see, you can follow in this map and you can use that one for navigation, traveling, etc. Um, the second map is called thematic map. So it is a particular topic or the theme of the map. And most likely, so we are going to make abstract and invisible concept become visible and also become comparable. Okay, uh, so let's see one example here. So here we are talking about the world life uh, expectations. And first of all, so those numbers are not um, something that of the physical, um, the surface of the earth. So those are some very uh, numbers that variables, uh, variables, so that we can map those numbers on the map um, by using different colors and which we can compare those numbers on this map. Okay. And lastly, that our textbook also talk about a dynamic map. So I would say that the dynamic dynamic map can be a reference map or the reference map can be a dynamic map or semantic map can also be a dynamic map. So that means the map is interactive uh, and also you can change the representations of the words or uh, its contents, I would say, so, or the contents. So uh, it's like the online map. Uh, so for example, that we can now view the map on different mobile devices and in most cases, those dynamic maps, so we can set the, like if we can use that one, for one to find out the, the best route. Okay, and also we can zoom in and zoom out and also make some queries. Okay, so it's kind of new, new format of the maps. And we all learned that how to create those dynamic maps in the following uh, weeks. Uh, so let's talk also talk about the map elements. So what are the considered the most important elements? So a map should have a title, okay, which just give you give you a very concise uh, summary of your content. And map should have legend. So especially that if you are using the different symbols or colors, you you must include the legend. Um, skill is also required so all the right items are the required items so the skill is that so the linear relationship between the mapped object and also ground truth okay so you have to tell the scale information and of course the mapped body so what is our start area uh, we also have the insert map and also location map so insert map normally are the maps that talking about the more details, so provide more details than the, the mapped body. Location map can tell you the locations of the map, so general location of the map. So insert map normally will have a larger scale. Location map, map normally have a small scale. Okay, so this is the example. So here we let's check, let's find out those elements. So we have title. Okay, um, we have the legend. So for example, this one are using different colors so that you should provide legend. And also we have legend here as well. Um, let's say scale bars. So here it, we have two scale bars. Okay. And also the mapped body. So this is the, the ma major content of the map. So that is the mapped body. And we have the insert map. They're talking about more details of the start area. And then we have the locator map. So that roughly gave you what are the locations of this start area. Again, so those red items are the required. So um, for all the maps, you should have those red items. Uh, the map also should tell the directions. This is also required. Uh, so there are two ways can tell the direction, uh, directions. You can use uh, the uh, the grids, 
or latitude, longitude grids. Those are the maps for the small scale map. Or you can use a north arrow. So those are for the larger scale map. Uh, you can also have neat lines. So those are the borders uh, of the map elements. OK, and you can have symbols, especially for a semantic map. You can use uh, like different colors or different uh, symbols, different uh, like a size, the shape and colors. Uh, you can also label the places or you can also uh, have the, the labels for the other uh, spatial features like roads, uh, uh, what bodies, etc. You can also have the other text message like the data source, um, the date that map have been produced, and also the authors. Okay, uh, so let's look at some, uh, for example, the direction. And here we can see for this insert map, we do have this um, uh, north arrow. For this uh, more map body, we have those grids. Okay, so the latitude, longitude grids, uh, because it's a relatively uh, small scale map. Um, neat lines, so let's say those are the neat lines. Okay, so that include this map elements. And this is also a neat line, okay, that surround this map elements. And this is also can be considered neat line or the map border. Uh, map symbols. So on this insert map, we can see we are using colors to indicate different variables. So those are the symbols. Um, and also on this map body, we do have the symbol for the highway. Okay. Uh, and also place names. So for example, we have we do have those place names. Okay, those are the uh, for different state. And also we have the word body. Okay. So those are all the place names. Um, and also data source. Let's see. Uh, yes, so here this we do have the data source and sometimes you can have additional information for example the project information that you have you're using on this on those maps okay so those are um, again direction uh, uh, is also a required element and they also you, you should also you can also include the other map lab elements okay so let's also talk about map scale so map scale is very important so it is amount reduction that take place that going from the real world into the mapped body. Okay. In, in another way, it is the ratio of the map distance to the Earth's distance. Okay. So for example, that say if we are talking about a road segment, so if on the Earth it is five uh, 50 kilometers, and on this mapped body, uh, you cannot have a uh, 50 kilometers longer long map okay so for example that might be just five centimeters okay on the map so the scale will be that five centimeters divided by the 50 kilometers okay so scale is a very important information on the map because it can tell you the size of the object that's in the real world okay um and for the skills, also pay attention that so in geography, when we talk about the small skills or the larger skills, we are ruling, we are really talking about the value of the ratio. Okay, so for example, if you have one to one thousand, okay, and also if you have another one is one to ten thousand, okay, so one to ten thousand, the value is smaller than one to one thousand, okay, so in this case. Uh, rel relatively speaking, so this will be a larger scale and also this will be a small scale. Okay, so if we compare those two maps for the larger scale, it will show you a smaller mapped area and also will, which will give you also more details because you can zoom in. Uh, it is less generalized because you will, you will use less fewer abstractions. Uh, so it's like a zoom in action. On the other side, if you do have a small scale, so it will, it will show you larger area with less detail. Okay, larger area with less detail. Uh, it will be more general, generalized map. So for example, if you have a building, on the larger scale, it might be a polygon. 
However, in a small scale, it can it might be just true as a point. Okay, so it will be more generalized on a small scale map, and it is also kind of like zooming out from a larger scale. And when we express the scales, there are three ways. So we can use a word statement. Okay, so for example, one inch equals thirty five miles, or you can use this representation of the representative fraction. So like using this formula. Or finally, you can use a symbolic or graphic scales. So for example, you can just uh, have this line and divide by those four parts. And you can tell that, OK, so this line on the map on it or on this screen represents 40 miles on the Earth. OK, represent 40 miles on the Earth. So that is the graphic representation. And the graphic or symbolic representation is preferred. So it's preferred than the other two types of the scaling expression. OK, and the reason is because when you create this one on the map and when you zoom in or zoom out the map, the graphic symbology is always true. OK, it's always true. So for example, here we have this original map and that is either printed on the map or is on or on the digital format. So when you zoom in them, when you zoom in, so you make them the scale larger. OK, and you can see the the legend of the uh, this symbolic scale also increase. OK, at the same uh, scale so that it has been enlarged. So it will always be true. OK, so the scale will always be true. However, if you're using word statement or if you're using this fraction, you have to update that statement or the values in the fraction. OK, but if you're using graphic scale, so it will always be true because they will be enlarged or um, um, shrank at the same time. OK, 